When we joined the Harvard Strategic Data Project, we talked about proficient students, we talked about partially proficient students, and now we talk about correlations, we talk about statistically significant correlations, we talk about relationships between data sets, um, and we ask questions um, when we're looking at them. My name is Rachel Goldberg. I am the Director of Staff Development for Elizabeth Public Schools in Elizabeth, New Jersey. My name is Monica Martinez. I am an SDP Fellow at Elizabeth Public Schools in the Division of Research, Evaluation, and Assessment. One of the key uh, priorities in my district was the on-time graduation rate. It was uh, currently at 66% and um, we had anecdotal evidence um, pointing to reasons why, but um, we really had not done a comprehensive analysis of the high school experience, where our students were struggling, um, why, and what we can do to change that. I chose to use the Strategic Data Project Toolkit, which is a resource that is available for education analysts to examine their agency's data and help answer some of those key questions regarding uh, the student pathway. The 9th to 10th grade transition, high school graduation, college enrollment, and college persistence. The SDP Toolkit contains five steps that guide an education analyst in collecting and analyzing their agency's data. It moves from identifying the data, collecting that data, cleaning it and coding it, making sure that the variables are accurate, and then merging disparate data sets, analyzing that data, and then finally adopting best practices for data use. I started by looking at high school completion rates at the end of ninth grade. Um, ninth grade is a critical year for high school students, and students who are off track to graduate at the end of ninth grade have not accumulated the necessary credits to move on to 10th grade. Once a student falls off track, it is very likely that he or she will not graduate high school on time or drop out. I found that of our off-track students, over 50% of them eventually dropped out. So Monica used that data that she'd gathered to put together um, and respond to the, the SDP diagnostic. Um, and she kind of hunkered down. Well, you know, we, I checked on project, I was away. And um, when I came back, um, she presented this amazing thing to me. And I said, wow, <laughs> this is awesome. Um, I think that was actually my first words was, this is awesome. Because what it did was it really started to take the, the discussion away from how many students were proficient um, and having some relationship between that and their being successful to how many students are on track to graduate in the right amount of time. How many students are on track to go to college? How do we know if students um, will be successful in college? How, how soon can we help to maybe change their trajectory? I shared this finding with district leadership and it immediately sparked some questions and dialogue about what was going on in Elizabeth, um, where our students were struggling with, and particularly which courses um, they were struggling with the most. I found that over 50% of the students who were off track had failed one of five subjects. The most common subject um, was environmental science and the second most common, surprisingly, was physical education. We found that students were receiving an F if they did not have the PE uniform that day. This was a district policy that was really impacting um, our students' future success and we decided to change it immediately. Students are now allowed to complete content appropriate coursework on their iPads if they do not have the school uniform. Elizabeth said, we now know that there's something that we can change. And we think that if we make this little change, whether it's the, the policy changes, a curriculum change, that we think that, that making that shift right now will have an immediate impact on the success of our students. Um, and so we changed it.